what we mean by a comfortable stance is, is a stance that the breath runs freely and the breath runs well. And there's a question about where we breathe to. So within Shining Qigong, we breathe into a Ming Men, into the small of the back, and to, or, well, we can also refer to this as kidney breathing. So if you put your hands here, or back of the hands here, or a single hand, make contact with the small of the back, however is comfortable for you. And then as you breathe, notice that part of the body, and you may find that you get a small amount of movement in that part of the body when you breathe. If you don't, it doesn't overly matter. It's noticing that as the target for where the breath travels down to. And although your lungs don't go down that far, the movement of the lungs can have an impact into that part of the body. And what you'll probably notice is that the quality of the breath changes. The breath is more relaxed and the breath is deeper. So a comfortable stance helps us to breathe comfortably into that place. If you try a small adjustment, so lock the knees, you'll find that you can't breathe as comfortably into that place, so soften the knees. If you release the hands to the sides, you'll probably find where the hands were is warm. So breathe into the warm patch on your back. And this is breathing into Ming Men, the kidney breathing. When we come into a Qigong practice, the first thing you want to do is relax the body. So kidney breathing is a way of relaxing the whole body, coming back into a Qigong state. But we can also use other movements, so we can mobilize the neck. No particular movement here that we're looking at. Opening up the space between the vertebrae. And bring the awareness down the spine into the mid spine. We can draw the shoulder blades together and release the shoulder blades apart. This can coordinate with the breath as well. And then we can also use circling of the shoulders. So in order to do that, lift them up at the front, sink them down at the back. And again, this can coordinate with the breath. And we can then increase the size of this movement. So not just the shoulder blades and shoulders, Open the elbows. Open the wrists and the hands so the hands rise up and they sink down at the sides. So we turn this into bigger circles for shoulder blades. And it corresponds with the breath. So the in breath rises, the out breath sinks. We can make the movement bigger. As you make the movement bigger, you start to get the whole of the body involved. So now the spine is getting involved. The whole of the front of the body gets involved. So we can use this to relax the body further. And we can also change direction here. So when the hands get to the top, the out breath sinks down the front of the body. In breath rises up the sides. Sinks down the flank. 
characterizes it as uh, sinks down the front, rises at the side. Proper model. And then the next time the hands come down in front of lower down to air, allow them to open out onto the hips. So the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists, the hands, the fingers are all relaxed. Spine is open. Then we're going to rotate the tailbone. So this can be a small movement, it can be a large movement. Have a feel into how big a movement you can comfortably make with the tailbone, certainly the tailbone today. Then once you've explored where those limits are for you today, soften the movement off and make it more fluid. It's a fantastic movement for opening up the hips, for mobilising the whole pelvic area. Be very gentle, but it can really make a difference. And then we can change direction. So this movement is predominantly between the lowest rib and the knee. It really is just mobilising that lower part of the spine, getting the hips working well. But then what I'd like you to do is relax the hands and allow the circling to get lazy. So it starts to travel through the whole body. It's just a way of relaxing the whole body. And then bring focus into the bottom of the feet, weight shifting around the bottom of the feet. Bottom of the feet softening and opening. The ankles mobile. The knees soft. The hips moving easily. And then coming back to a centered position. So the body relaxed. With the body relaxed, the mind quiets. And we start to notice the space inside. From the space inside, we can expand the awareness out slightly. Notice the space immediately around us. The chi body area of awareness that we have just outside the body. In this place we can expand the awareness out further, out into this group of people, everybody connected, everybody supporting, everybody supported. One chi field. Taking a moment just to enjoy this connection, this chi field, this connection we have together. And then expand this awareness out further again, out into blue sky, out into Huan Chi. And in this space, everything is connected, everything is supported. And we can then gently draw the mind back into lower density, back into our center. And the intention today is chi flowing well. Chi flowing well. Relax the hands to the side.
Okay, so today we'll start with turning the thumbs. So the thumbs turn forwards and we open the front of the body very gently, very subtle. Then the thumbs turn back. We open the shoulder blades and we open the back. Open the front. Front, hands rising up a little further. The back, back body bows down a little further. So gradually increasing the size of the movement. Opening up the whole of the body, but here we're paying attention to the breath. So as the hands rise up, this is an in breath. As they sink down, this is an anchor. Breathing in and rising up. Releasing down. Within. Releasing. More time. Breathe in. Release down. In slightly higher. Release down. A little longer to release down. And rising up. All of the front of the body open. Bow body down, hold of the back, open. Open front. And open back, moving between these two comfortably in your own time. Everything moving, everything open. She flowing well. Movement is already perfect. It's perfect for today. A few more times, just enjoying the flow. Then the next time the hands rise up, allow them to connect up into blue sky and pause. Body moving gently, swaying like a reed in the river. And then fingers connecting up into blue sky and draw blue sky down. After all of the bones in the body, down into the top of the neck and down through each vertebra, down through the space between each vertebra, through the neck into the mid spine, through the mid spine into the lumbar, through the lumbar, down to the coccyx, down to the tailbone, back up to the hips, down through the legs, through the knees, through the ankles, all the bones and feet, Lift chair. Draw chi down. Not only through the bones, but through the marrow. The marrow is bright and perfect. And the marrow includes the brain and the spinal cord. Bright and healthy. All the way down the spine. All the way down to the tip of the tailbone. Down through the legs. Once more through the whole body, draw chi down. Marrow is bright and healthy. 
all of the bones, the space between the bones, all the joints open and close. Down through the legs. Lift you up. And pause at the top, body moving down. Okay, draw the feet closer together. Then we're going to bow the body down, but this time pay attention, each vertebra moves away from the neck. Take your time to release down through the neck and the mid spine before getting to the lumbar and releasing the lumbar spine. Opening up the space. It's not about how far down you go, it's about creating the space in the back. And then as far as you can go, I'd like you to hold your elbows with your hands. Leg straight. And the idea here is that the in-breath rises up through the legs, the out-breath releases down as if the elbows could almost reach down and touch the ground. Moving into the men, out-breath releases down through the spine. So there's a gentle rock. Then point your elbows and lightly to touch the ground as if you fall over, so I prefer they didn't. Just allowing everything to move up. Few more breaths. And then the next time you breathe out, release the hands from the elbows, allow them to hang down, lift the tailbone up and allow the body to hang. And then sink the tailbone down, unwind the spine from the bottom up, one vertebra at a time, and rising up into the blue sky. Continue all the way up. At the top, move freely. And then we repeat this movement. It's not important how far you bow down. It's just important that as you move forwards, you open the space between the vertebra, carrying on down until you've got as far as is comfortable. And then when you're as far as is comfortable, hold the elbows. And with the breath, Allow the body to gently move so that cycles up through the legs on the in breath, out through the arms on the out breath. Gently out. Keep in going with the breath. Body gently rocking. Then the next time you breathe out, release the hands from the elbows and allow them to hang down. Lift the tailbone up. Sink the tailbone down. And then straighten up the spine from the bottom up, one vertebra at a time, rising up, the whole spine realigning, hands rising up into the blue sky, then they move freely, and draw chi down, upper dantian, middle dantian, lower dantian. Connecting out through the legs into the earth and lift the shear. Draw chi down. Through the entire body, chi flowing well. Continuing down through the legs into the earth, lift the shear.
پروژیدن Necking down through the legs and then lifting chi up and one more time, draw chi down. But this time pausing at lower down to end when you get there. Right, centered and lower down to end when you get there. And then today we're going to use something called big light chi. So big like she is the same as little like she is just bigger. But it involves the whole body. So the elbows open, the wrists open, the arms open. The mind expands out in all directions. It expands down, it expands up, it expands out. As if connecting out into blue sky. Connecting out into the far reaches of the universe as far out as the mind can go. Out into Hunyuan Chi. And then when we draw Chi back, squat down slightly, gather it in. Take your time, draw right inside. Have a selfish moment. Gather it all in. It's yours. All inside. And then expand out all the way out into blue sky. Huge. Out into the range. Grab it in. Tailbone sinks down. Squat down slightly. And then expand out. It's a gentle form of squatting, but here there's no physical just an idea, drawing chi in. And as you squat down, the smaller the back open slightly, so we create more space in the end, more space in lower density. As you stand up, you expand out in all directions. Halfway, the crown lifts. Gathering in, coiling the tailbone. Few more times, all the way. All the way back. Effortless. Drawing in. Effortless expanding. Gather in. Expand out. Gather in. And expand out. All the way out and then rising up. And draw chi down. So here, chi traveling down through the body. Nowhere in particular, just flowing freely down through the body, showering in blue sky, showering in Hunyuan Chi. And at the bottom, it lifts up and draw Chi down. Chi flowing down, down the front, down the back, down the sides, through the center. The whole body, blue sky. And then the next time the hands get to lower dentae, allow them to pause at lower dentae. We'll repeat big lachi once more. Take a moment to be inside, take a moment to be into lower dentae, noticing the space inside before you start. And then from deep inside, the awareness expands out in all directions. 
all the way out into blue sky, all the way out into Huyuan Chi, out beyond the blue sky. And then draw Chi back, Huy Lu, tailbone sinks down. That is it. It doesn't need to be a big squat down, just a gentle sinking. And then Bafo, the crown lifts up, expanding out. Boilu down, gather it in. Halfway up, expanding out. Gather in. Expand out. Couple more. In. Out. In. And out. Hands reaching out, to expanding out into blue sky, keeping going and then rising. Draw chi down, the chi shower, traveling down through the whole body, refreshing, opening up space, drawing all the way down. And at the bottom, lift chi up. Own time, lift chi up and pour chi down through the whole body. Enjoy. Every time it can move differently. A few more times. And the next time the hands get down to lower down to end, allow them to pause at lower down to end. I'm centered into lower down to end. And then one more time, expanding out in all directions. Gathering back from all directions. Squatting down slightly less this time. Smaller movement, but the whole body still responding. Expanding out again, the whole body responding, chi flowing through the entire body. Not as big a movement. Gather in. Expand out. In. Out. In. Out. In. And once more, rising up, 
this time when we draw chi down, we draw chi down the front of the body. And then lift chi up the back. It's just an idea, it travels up the whole of the spine, across the top of the head, down the front. And as far as we in the center of the pelvic area, then travel up the back. And down the front. Continue around this cycle, up the back with the in-breath, down the front with the out-breath. A few more times. Next time the hands come down in front of the abdomen, in front of lower dentine, allow them to pause, open the start slightly, and take a few breaths, focusing into lower dentine. Very relaxed, very centered. The whole chi body gently swaying. So in this posture, we're connecting from the space beneath up into lower dentine. The space above back into lower dentine. And the space around us back into lower dentine. So the mind is centered in lower dentine. But we're fully aware, the mind, the awareness is vast. But it's centered in lower dentine. more breaths. And then to ease out, a very simple way to ease out of practice, relax the hands to the sides, then expand them forwards, gather chi, and draw chi back towards lower dante. And I'm going to draw my feet together. You don't have to. One hand rests on the other, rests on duchi, rests on the navel. And the mind rests in lower dante. Relax the hands, gently ease out. Okay. Let's come and have a come and have a chat. So I won't unmute anybody. Please feel free to unmute yourself if you uh, have got any questions or any observations. Can I ask John? Um, I've got a, a sore back. Uh -huh. and, uh, so I'm sort of, I'm stuck in a quandary, do I, uh, when, when you're going lower, do I just go down a part or do I squat? Uh, okay, when, <laughs> when we're doing the, the bowing down, you, you go as far as is comfortable. Yeah. Um, so if I give you sort of a side view of it, um, so if my back's playing mm -hmm. up, and I get down to sort of this type of distance here, mm. then actually the movement is still traveling up through the legs and down through the back. Yeah. But I may only have this much movement. Yeah. Yeah, I may not even have that much movement. 
Yeah. It's important to maintain that idea of the flow coming up and around. So it doesn't matter where you are physically, you know, if you can get your elbows close to the floor, amazing. But that's probably not hugely beneficial. It's the flow that's more beneficial. When you squat down, again, the idea is the tailbone sinks down and then the crown lifts up. Mm. And it's more effective to do that type of movement, which is quite a small movement, than it is to use any of the methods that we use to cheat. So some people put their their feet on their parts and pointing out and they do these types of things. Uh, this is this is a physical movement and it hasn't got the same benefit. All right, so just do what you can. Okay. Yeah, effectively do what you can, but also notice that every day is different. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I've been doing a fair bit of work in the garden recently and occasionally I've tweaked my back in ways that means that I come into my morning practice and I'm going down and going, whoa, I've got really limited movement here today compared to normal. And you just go, okay, today I've got really limited normal movement compared to normal. And that's fine. Mm. And generally within a couple of days it eases off. Yeah, thank you. Helen, uh, you're muted at the moment. Would you like to unmute yourself? Oh. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Got you now. I also have a bad back and I was wondering, I bend my knees when I go down. Is that okay to do that or should I have straight legs? It's, it, it's, better, it's better with straight legs uh, because then you're opening up a lot more of the channels and the legs. You're sort of opening up your hamstrings. But um, it's, I think you need to play with it and, and see what works best for you. Um, Sometimes you see people bending their legs and, it, and it's purely cheating. So the typical thing that will happen is that somebody sort of gets down to this position and their hands won't quite get to the ground, but they feel as if their hands should get to the ground. Yeah. And so they do that. Right. Um, that is, that's unhelpful. But if, if what happens is as you come down, well, especially with the feet apart posture, I'll do this slightly diagonally. As you come down here, you may find that the legs naturally want to bend. If the spine's opening, that's okay. And certainly when you come to straighten the back up again, if you soften the knees, it can help with that upward movement as well. So um, if you stick to the accuracy of the form, then you would say always keep the legs straight. But the accuracy of the form is it's something you can play with further down the line. Work with something that, that works for you. But don't use something that you're not pushing yourself a little bit every day. So, Thank you. There's sort of a balance between the two. That sounded oh, hugely God. evasive. Would anybody else like a hugely evasive answer, Martin? Uh, <laughs> John, I'm having some difficulty in understanding you when you're instructing us. Um, I, I'm having to look to see what you're doing to work out what you're saying. Okay. I don't know um, if anybody else is having a bit of trouble. I feel like I have to peek. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I try, I mean, especially like today was the first time we did the hands holding the elbows. Yep. Uh, and I fully expected everybody to have a look at that point. But what I try to do is run through it once ease out and then run through it a second time so the second time you can do it without looking and then trying to keep the trying to keep the explanations consistent um there's nothing wrong with looking um the only <laughs> point it becomes a problem sorry the only point it becomes a problem is is if you are sort of straining to look then um I, i'd advise against that that particular movement, John, with the elbows held, could you perhaps show me, from the other way around, side on, what, because you're going up and down, it looks like you're going up and down with them. Right. Can you yeah. just show me what that looks like from the other, from another di direction so I can see what I'm supposed to be achieving there? <laughs> you can see <laughs> what I achieve, but you can probably go further than my this. Okay, so from here, when you move down, we should be... We should be folding down through the neck, yes, the spine, and then the lumbar. And then when we get yeah. down as far as is comfortable, we yeah. weight, we 
hold on to the elbows and feel. Yes. It's sort of a flow that travels around the body. Oh, it's you're almost doing a circular movement, are you? Yeah, it's almost circular. Okay, I get it now. And then yeah, that's helpful. I get it. Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah, great. Because I was just going up and down. I thought, I'm not sure if this is right. So actually, I see it. it's, a, it's a forward, almost a forward, a forward and a backward motion, but up and down at the same time. Yeah, um, there was, I remember years ago, I was in China and there was this, um, there was this uh, lady who had been pra practicing Qigong for many years and she, and she only spoke Chinese and French. She came from that part of China. And she said to me that there are no straight lines in Qigong. Everything is a circle. Mm. And, and it's always stuck. That that's actually, helpful. Yeah, that's you know, good. Everything should be a circle. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? I've got so much chi racing through my brains right now. <laughs> I've got so tired. <laughs> that and the heat, it's just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, um, one of the things that they do when, when, when you practice in hot conditions, quite often you will have far more opening exercises being done because the body is considered to be more supple when it's hot. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a, a retreat I guess it was a couple of years ago we had a very hot spell and we were working in the UK with a group of people and uh, there was no air conditioning in the practice room in this venue that we were in and it was steaming hot in there and these forward bends we were being held in those for long periods of time because it was considered when the body's hot it has more space um, but it was oh it was um it was rigorous. I will go no further than that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll bear that in mind. Um, I'd like to finish the session off with, uh, with the La Chi set. Uh, and La Chi is the expand out and gather back. But whereas we've just been practicing a big La Chi, and the big La Chi engages the whole body all in one go, what I'd like to do is I'd, I'd like to use some variations of La Chi that we see within the practice lift you up, port you down. So if people here have been to Simon's class, he uses the lift you up, port you down practice in the end of the class normally. And I'd just like to give a few sort of shortcuts into that. Um, so the movements are, are all expand out and gather back, but we do it in different directions. Uh, and it just creates a different experience of Lachi. So I'd like to finish off with, uh, yeah, maybe 10 minutes of that. We'll finish it, we, yeah, so we'll finish in about 10 minutes, but then obviously I'm here for a chat and conversation and questions afterwards. So uh, let's dive back into some practice. <laughs> okay, let me mute everybody so that, uh, I stay as the main presenter. <clears throat> now for this practice, we'll practice with the legs closer together. The idea of legs closer together is actually, it's more to do with a single connection going down and a single connection rising up. So if you need to have the feet slightly apart for balance or for comfort, and you feel as if you can still have that single, that idea of a single connection going down, that's good, that's fine. So the body is centered and upright. Lift halfway, lift the crown. Lift freely in, lift the centre of the pelvic area very gently. Allow the whole body to sway. The body should be very relaxed and full of chi. And then there's a very quick opening. Turn the palms, they're connecting down into the earth. Lift she up to the sides. Take your time. Lift she all the way up. Up above the head. 
and then draw chi down to lower dantian. And pause at lower dantian. So normal large chi from lower dantian. Open the elbows, open the wrists, open the arms. Then gather back in. So it's actually a very subtle version of what we just did. So when we expand out, do stand up slightly straighter, and when we draw back in, we squat down ever so slightly. And we expand out is Kai, and we gather back is Fur. Then lift the hands up in front of the chest. Turn the palms to face forwards. And now we push out into blue skies. If pushing out in all directions, and we gather back in from all directions. So still love chi. But here we push and we pull. No straight lines, so the shoulders are circling. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. One more. And pull. Pushing out gently. Then the hands open out to the sides. The whole body opens. Hands draw back together, gathering in. Expand out. Gather in. Out. Up on there. Out. And in. Out. And in. And hands connected out into the far distance. They open around the horizon, out into a lock. And here they push. And pull. The idea is more important than the movement. It's the idea of expanding out and gathering back and the body responding. Now you're pushing out gently, and the hands turn and lift she up, up above the head, draw she down, upper dentin, middle dentin, lower dentin, pause at lower dentin. Take a moment at lower dental.
and then we'll come into a standard closing. So the hands rise up to prayer position. And then rise up above the head. They continue their journey up into the sky. And they open to the sides. And expand out. Mind expanded out into the far distance. Then the palms turn to face up. Then they get to shoulder height. And they move forwards. All the way forwards, the middle fingers connect back towards upper dentine, the space in the head. Upper dentine, full of blue sky. She is about that. Elbows draw back close to the body, middle fingers connect to the center, to the sides of the chest, connecting into middle dentine. All functions, normal. She is abundant. Fingers push back into the space behind. And open. Unwinding, expanding forwards. Then gathering chi, gathering back inside. One hand on top of the other. On the Mind resting. In lower dentine. The whole body relaxed. Full of potential. Quiet and centered. Release the hand. Ease out, and then we'll finish with a joyful exclamation in Chinese. The exclamation is how la, how is good la is already. So I will unmute everybody so that you have the opportunity to join me in a joyful exclamation of how la. <laughs> so raising the hands. One, two, how la. Oh, one more. How la. Thank you very much. Please feel free to stay and chat. Um, as you know, this is uh, supported by the Parkinson's Current Support Charity. So if you've enjoyed, if you found value in this and you'd like to make a donation, please do. Thank you, John, very much. Thank you. You make a donation, John. Is it through the website? Um, yes, I would assume so. Um, I don't know whether Covey is still with us at the moment or not. I've, I, I have to admit that I don't know. Uh, I would assume that there is a donation portal on the website. Okay. Well, Thank I, you. I, I can see Agnes talking, but unfortunately yeah. muted. Sorry. <laughs> Just to say there is a button, a donate button on their main um, website page. Okay. It's, so quite the, easy. it's quite easy to find. The email directs me to the website. Yeah, so go into the website and you'll see there's a donate button okay. and you press that and it takes you through what you need to do next. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much, John. Take see care. everyone next, next week. week. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Take care. John. Have a good day. And you. Take care, Doreen. Thank you. Okay, cheers, folks. Take care, go. Okay. And on that note, I will, uh, unless there's any other questions, I will disappear off. Okay, take care.